Hello everybody, in this Rhino video demo, I would like to show how we can create a 3D printable lattice light structure similar to the one that's been shown on screen. By the way, this is a requested video and you can assess similar videos by clicking on the label over here. Okay, let's start. The first thing that I need to do is to create a single unit of the lattice structure which is a quarter the size of this square grid here. And let's begin by drawing a polyline and having the grid snap turn on, create the first line like that and then let's trim this line into one half okay which can do so by having the object snap the mid snap turn on and then create a point and having it snap to the middle section of this line okay and we will use this point as a cutting object to perform the trim so now we can go to trim select the cutting object as this press enter select this part to perform a trim okay and we don't not need the point anymore let's select it and delete it okay next thing we need to do is to raise this uh end position upwards okay Let's select it and then click on this end point and click on the arrow transformation widget and specify uh, distance okay let's put it as point five okay enter And the next thing I need to do is to create three more spoke of this, okay? And we can do so by using the polar array. So I'm going to pull out the array and click on the polar array. Select object array is this, okay? Enter. And center array is uh, with the object and snap turn on. Select this, okay, as a center. And Please ensure that we are doing it in the correct view as this command is view specific. In this case here, I'm doing it in the top view so that the array will be performed in a way that is particular to our view. Okay, so center of polar array is this and the number of items which is inclusive of the original should be 4. So press 4, enter. And view angle, 360, enter, enter to accept. And I've got the bottom half of the lattice pattern. Okay, now let's create the top half. Okay, which you can do so by using the mirror command. Okay, so I'm going to use the mirror command or simply type mirror at the command prompt. Okay, select object to mirror, select these four spokes. Okay, enter. Start mirror plane. Okay, make sure that the object snap end is turned on. So this is the start. Okay, and then by pressing and holding the shift key, I'm able to establish a temporary auto. Okay, and then click anywhere along this direction to establish the second point of the mirror plane. Okay, and I will have this thing here. Okay, as mentioned earlier. This structure needs to be a quarter the size of this square grid. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it down. Okay, so with the whole thing selected, let's group it. Okay, and what I need to do is to move the center pivot to this corner before I perform the scaling. To do that, I can press and hold the control key click on the center pivot of the gumball, release the control key, and with the object and snap turn on, snap to this corner, okay, something like that. And then, I need to perform a 
proportional scaling with a factor of half. Okay, so we can do so by pressing and holding the shift key. Press and hold the shift key and click on any of the scaling widget. Okay, it could be this or this or this. Okay, so I will click on this. And then because I want to scale it to half size, so I'm going to type uh, 0 0.5, enter. And yep, we got uh, our single unit of the lattice structure. I think I want to move it, this thing to start from here. So what I'm going to do is uh, select it again. Press and hold the control key. Snap to this end. And then using the grid snap, snap this to here okay yep okay i got this design here okay and now let's proceed to make multiple instances of it okay to create our lattice structure we can do that by using this command here the rectangular array okay so I'm going to click on this rectangular array, select object to array is the structure that we have created. Enter. Number in the x direction, let's set it to 5. Okay, number in the y direction, let's set it to 5. Number in the z direction, which is in this direction, let's set it to 4. Okay, and then when prompted for the units, cell or x spacing, click the extreme corner. To establish the first location, make sure your object snap the end snap is turned on. Okay. When asked for the other corner, let's uh, snap to the other corner, which is here. Okay. And when prompted for the height, let's move up the cursor and snap to this corner over here. Okay. Let me zoom in. Yeah, this corner over here, press down and enter to accept. Okay, so we got the grid structure okay <clears throat> the next thing i need to do is to create the rectangular frame for this lattice okay i can do so by firstly creating a bounding box okay so i'm going to type bounding box and select the entire structure press enter enter and you notice that i'm um, I created a bounding box but what I actually need is the edge of the bounding box okay which will form the basis for the rectangular frame okay so to get this we can use the curve from objects spread wireframe command okay so using the extract wireframe select the bounding box press enter and you notice that we have curves created, okay, which are the wireframes, okay. And now I don't need the bounding box anymore. I'm going to select it and press the delete key, okay. Okay, I reckon the next thing I want to create is the frame, the rectangular frame, okay. And let's head over to the sub D2 bar. I'm going to new in V7 sub D2 bar. And use the multiply command to create a frame. Okay, so I can click on uh, this, select the curves, one more here. Okay, the radius, I need the radius to be 0 0.05, okay, enter, uh, cap and let's have it on, okay, the strut division will control the, the angularity of the final result, okay, if you set a low value, it will be less angular. Higher value will give better result. Okay, let's just use one and see what happens. Okay, you see that if I were to use one, I get something that is like quite rounded over here, which is not what I need. Okay, I need something that is conforming more to this wireframe. So let's delete this 
and we do the multi part again. Okay. Press enter. Okay, and for the strut divisions, let's set it to nine now. Enter. Yeah. So this is closer to what I want. Okay, something like that. And let's hide this. Okay. And the frame as well. And hide it. Okay. Now let's proceed to thicken these wireframes. Okay. And we can use the multi pipe again. Okay, so we click the multi pipe, and the thickness will be the same as that of the rectangular frame. So and yeah on the strut division i don't think we need to be so high a value let's set it to one let's see how enter okay we got this kind of result okay and if you look closely you'll notice that at the place where there is a convergence of many curves the blending is not evenly distributed. Okay. If an aesthetic final output is desired, perhaps something like that will not be acceptable. So what I'm gonna do is um create an alternative method to circumvent this twisted blend over here. Okay, so let's delete this and what i need is only maybe the original structure here okay and let's remove the rest so i'm going to do an inverse selection okay i don't need all these and let's just delete them okay as mentioned just now the blends over here pertaining to the sub D object uh, was not well distributed and my guess is that because there are too many curves converging onto a single point here so what I'm going to do is work around this uh, limitation by reducing the number of convergence over here by creating another curve here and then connect the bottom and the top half to two ends of the curve okay so uh, let's start now. Let me ungroup this. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's move this downward. Okay, let's say by uh, 0.1. Okay, so I'm going to type uh, minus 0 0.1. Okay, to get something like that maybe that's too much okay let's let's just have a give a smaller value okay uh maybe 0 0.05 okay something like that okay so in theory i i need to have all these connected in this way okay so what i'm gonna do is let's just move this down like that okay since they are all gonna be of the same height okay gonna move this down make sure the object the end snap is turned on okay Make sure you're not moving the entire curve but but the, the end point of the curve okay so something like that okay and because i will want the top and the bottom to be more or less like symmetrical let's let's uh do the same for for this okay so i'm going to set this to just 0 0.05 upwards oops sorry let's do it do this again I'm going to take away that, that minus sign. Okay. Okay. And let's snap this to here. Okay. Something like that. And I'm going to create another line here. Okay. 
Okay. And now let's um do the lattice structure again, and hopefully we will be able to have a nicer connectivity over here. Okay, with regards to this um dimension of this curve, I think you have to explore experiment yourself until you're able to get the result that you want okay in this case here i think i'll just create something that is quite space apart so that we can see the the result over here okay so uh, let's continue to build the lattice structure again so we can do so by using the rectangular array select object array is this stuff here enter repeat like uh, what we have done previously number in the x direction is 5 y direction 5 uh, z direction is 4 okay so the unit cell spacing okay this is the first corner second corner the third corner the height okay press enter and we got a new structure here okay with the addition of these connecting curves okay so let's build the wire frame using the sub d pipe again okay so click on the sub d pipe select curves to pipe parameters will all be the same okay yeah so now we got this result and you'll notice that the blending is more evenly distributed because of the changes that we have um, performed in these areas okay as mentioned previously this final object needs to be 3d printable so what i'm going to do is uh, let's select this and analyze for volume okay so mass property volume great there's a positive value that means this thing has a volume okay and now let's bring back the rectangular frame okay so right mouse click to show object and yeah got frame back and now let's merge the frame to the lattice structure okay by using the boolean union okay i'm going to union this into one solid object that is our 3d printable okay so using the solid tools the boolean union okay, click on it select surface to union is this and this press enter okay it's done let's check for volume analyze mass property volume okay there's a volume to this object so it's solidified and it's thus 3d printable okay. okay with that i come to the end of this video demo see you bye